What's going on guys? Today is gonna be a very, very interesting video because I have a very unique opportunity to spend some time with this gentleman from LCI or Lippert Components. He is one of their field service technicians. Is that a yes, good sir. name for it? Yep. Could you introduce yourself real quick? My name's Matt Need. Um, I've been with Lippert for it was 10 years in January of this year. So um, great place to be. Um, having a lot of fun out here the last couple of days. Yeah, we've been doing a lot. <laughs> How long have you been in the RV industry in general? Oh goodness. It's gotta be close to 20 years now. Heck, I'd have to think about it. It makes me sound old, but yeah, well, right close to 20 years. That's experience, right? <laughs> that, you've probably seen, and we've talked about a lot of really interesting stories. Some we can share, some we can't share, but quite frankly, it's it's a unique job because you're dealing with people's homes in many cases. Mm -hmm. yep. You're dealing with something that has to be towed down the road safely. Mm -hmm. But probably more importantly, you're dealing with something you have very little user knowledge on, right? Mm -hmm. You don't know how a specific RV was used, how it was towed, yep. what and what it's been through. Yep. Right. Yep. There, there's there's all kinds of um, um, things that can go into it, precursors that can go into what's either caused our problem or what the customer is seeing, what the trailer's doing, what the trailer's telling me, and things like that. Um, the experience does play a lot into it, um, but. We see new stuff all the time. You're absolutely towing a house down the road. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, and every manufacturer does it differently. Every manufacturer right? does a lot of things, a lot of things different as far as um, whether it's fit and finish, how they how they route things, how they run things, and stuff like that. Um, there there's a lot of commonality to it, but there is a lot of uh, a difference differences yep. in there too. So it's a fun deal. I like doing it. It's, there's a challenge every day and customers and and uh they look at they look at a lot of these things as a as a big investment and i i get it so you know you try to do what you can to to help them out yep and we're going to take some time and talk about the slide out we're going to talk about some other features on the rv so hang tight we'll be right back basically whenever you have a technician like from lci come out and they're exploring an issue and they're trying to resolve that issue you know we as humans are capable of, of erroring, right? We might not build everything perfectly. Absolutely. It may be a component issue. It may be a manufacturer of the RV issue. I mean, you guys pretty much provide everything from here down and then a lot of stuff that connects to the side panels like yep. the windows and stuff like that. But yep. the whole body here is pretty much a manufacturer thing of whoever you're buying the RV from. But that being said, there, you know, there could be issues with things. Axles have problems sometimes, wheels have problems, you know, frames have problems. And that's why this guy is employed because he goes out there and fixes this stuff. Yep. But the point of this is the fact that we're all capable of mistakes. Even me as an owner and somebody who's gonna tow this unit, I could accidentally or unintentionally do something while I'm towing my fifth wheel that could damage something. Then when this gentleman has to come out and try to figure out how to fix it, if I don't share with him specifically what happened or what could have happened thousands of miles ago, it makes his his job far more challenging because he's diagnosing a problem or a potential failure without knowing the true story or the history of what this specific RV has been through. And if you have an RV like this and you are somehow involved in some type of a major incident, you could have frame or structural damage that you're unaware of. And here's the, the kicker. These are delivered to dealership lots over thousands of miles in some cases. So just because it's brand new doesn't mean something didn't happen en route to the dealership that could affect your experience with this RV as an owner. Absolutely. So I just wanted to preface all of that. Yep. Is that something you agree with? Absolutely. Um, I tell folks all the time, and it's kind of a beating a dead horse thing, but yes, human hands build these things. Um, there could be mistakes. I am, I am not above making a mistake myself even when i'm out there looking at something or fixing it but the more information that we have the more back and forth that we can have um to try to get to the root cause of the problem the better chance we have of getting that taken care of to where y'all ain't gonna have to have a problem with it again and that's always the goal when we come out and and look at a trailer whether it's for a insurance inspection from a from an incident or from something like you know that we're doing here this week or Whatever, we have no idea what's going on, um, but we're just trying to figure out said issue. Any of those questions that you can, you know, hey, you know what? My last trip was on my way back from Colorado and I went across this road that was just rough as could be. Or I was pulling out of the pulling out of the buckies and ran over a curb or something like that. That stuff is good information that points points us as guys out there trying to figure this out 
down which road makes the most sense for us. Yeah, it's kind of like going to a doctor's office. That is the absolute best analogy I've ever heard. Thank you for saying that. Absolutely. If your chest is hurting, you're not going to tell them, you know, um, that your chest isn't hurting. You're going to give them every bit of information you can so you can make the most educated um, diagnosis based on that information. Yeah. So, absolutely. The more information, the better. Um, it just helps us. Yeah. You know? I, th I think a lot of people are just always concerned about warranty. And they think, well, if I get an RV, I don't want to potentially say what might have happened. Or I don't want to reveal something that might make them think I did something that could have avoided my warranty. Mm -hmm. And from a technician's perspective, you know, how do you view those scenarios where you have somebody who's they're, they're, they have a new unit, mm -hmm. something weird has happened, maybe they caused it, but they just don't want to say so because they feel you're going to look at it and say, oh, I'm sorry, I can't work on it because the warranty's void. That's a tough one. That, I know. Is, that is a tough one. I'll tell you the way I, the way I treat it when I'm out there in the field. If I feel somebody's being honest with me, then I'm going to do everything I can to help them out. Mm -hmm. There's a right way and a wrong way to do things, and that's just the way that's just the way we do things at Lippert. You know, um, I've never I've never gotten in trouble for going above and beyond to help a customer. Mm -hmm. If that customer is is being square with me, then by golly, I'm going to be square with them. That's about the only way I can tell you. And all us guys out there that do this, there's only a handful of us around the country for as many components as we have and as big of an outfit as we are. Um, the quicker we can get in there, the quicker we can get it diagnosed, the quicker we can jump on it for you. Heck, the better it is. Yeah. You want to go out and use your unit? Let's work together and, uh, and, and get things taken care of. I'm also the guy that if you want to ask me questions, by golly, I'll answer them to the best of my ability. If I don't have an answer for it, there's somebody within the company that can give me yep. something, you know? And what I like about, about Matt so far, and I've had an opportunity to, to spend quite a bit of time talking to him, is he's not the kind of guy that's, I'm going to leave you stranded on the side of the road because I'm not going to do it for you, right? If It seems to me as if, you know, if somebody needs your help and you're out there, mm -hmm. you even told me a story where you helped some folks that were broken down or on the side of the road with their RV, and it wasn't a call. You just happened to be driving by them. Yeah. You know? Yep, yep. It was one of those lucky things. They were, I was passing just going to the left lane to pass and I seen what looked like rubber come flying up in the air and he was losing his uh, left front tire. It was going down. Didn't want to scare the guy, but I got him to pull over and we changed it out. He had a good spare and we changed it right there alongside the road. So absolutely. I mean, it's, it's funny when you're in a industry, I, if there's an RV around, I notice it. That's what I've mm -hmm. monkeyed with for so long. You know, it's like a, a guy that does roofs. If the shingles are falling off, he notices that kind of stuff. So yep. that stuff catches my eye and I try to pay attention to it. And, um, you know, the the that's kind of the satisfaction of going and helping yeah. somebody out. You know? yeah, I know this is going to sound a bit cheesy, but you say human hands go into all this. Yes, sir. But a lot of times it's the human heart that really helps you do what you do well and make sure that people are, are happy and satisfied when you're sending. You can't fix every problem. Nope. And sometimes problems can can aggravate other problems, right? Absolute, Let's say, absolutely. you know, you look at a frame, if there's a frame issue right here, you might be able to say, well, I might be able to do something there, but the damage that caused could have permeated up to your sidewall or other areas. So absolutely. you're likely, or you could have problems there, even though I'm able to get you back on the road right here. Yep, yep. That, that stuff comes up quite a bit where we have to, uh, work together with a with a dealership or with a manufacturer or something like that um, to kind of, I guess, work together is the best way I can mm -hmm. put it. You know, when that stuff does, you know, one issue causes another issue. And that's really what sometimes can be the hardest thing is finding out, hey, was it A that caused B or B that caused A? And you're, and you're working back and forth. And me, I don't think that sounds cheesy at all. I like the way that yeah. sounds, you know, and I like to try to help folks. You're never going to... I've learned over these last years, for sure, you're never going to make everybody happy, but if you're doing it what you feel like is the right way and you can make most everybody happy, then by golly, yeah. I think you're, you can go home and sleep pretty good at night. So yeah. um, it's, like I said, it's an enjoyable thing. So. Well, good deal. And, and I think the message here, guys, is that if you do engage with a company like LCI, they are a big, big corporation. They have tons of products, tons of things that, that, that fall under that umbrella, mm -hmm. but it's still ran by people. And there's still Absolutely. people out in the field and people that want to help you. The thing that I've realized oftentimes when people get upset at certain companies because of something, they may not be going at it the right way. You're going at it with that anger. You're going at it with that frustration because it's impacted something you own, possibly your home. And the last Thing you want is to see a major problem happen you know we had a plumbing issue here not related to lci at all Absolutely. this was related to the manufacturer of the black tank the holding tank and a piece of plastic got stuck inside of it 
you know, do I call and chew out the folks over at Coachman over that? Do I call and chew out the folks at LCI who had nothing to do with it? What I do is I realize that the problem was a pretty easy fix. Um, it was covered under warranty, so the folks over at Coachman took care of it. But the reality is it was frustrating, it was scary, but I handled it in a way that I felt didn't stress me out. You know, I was worried, but it was such an easy fix at the end of the day. They were in and out of here in 30 minutes. We got it taken care of. And, you know, what I wanted to do is just be very transparent with them. I explained to them how we used it, that I don't feel it was something we could have done. But if they had opened that up and there was an apple stuck inside there, it's my fault. Okay, so while we have a representative, actually a lot of representatives from LCI here, but while we have the guy that likes to weld stuff, and he knows a lot about the slide mechanisms, he knows a lot about the construction of the frame and all this stuff, a question I've been asked time and time again in my videos on this new RV is why this window looks crooked to the seal right here, why it looks like it's leaning in. Nobody ever can look, unless it's pulled apart, between the main rails where those arms go in and out. They're not in there straight. They're not um, perpendicular to the frame rails. They're actually set at a pitch. If you watch when your slide runs, all your drive is at the bottom. And you have one drive, the other one's an idler as far as the two arms go. So that when it starts pushing, that bottom will come out and then the top will tip away. Mm -hmm. And then when you go back in, same thing. Um, that top hits first so you can pull in the bottom and get your seal. So that's, uh, they call it slope when they put in the, when they weld the arms into the chassis. You've got a lot of it right there, plus these boxes. If you, if you, if a guy could take the box out, the roof's kind of pitched away so water can run away. So take the uh, slide top right of the equation. Let's say that wasn't up there. Okay. And then, so basically the boxes, from the way I understand it, I'm no expert on the way they construct a unit, but think of it this way. The floor is deeper here and narrower at the top. So really you end up with a 90 here along the unit and everything else is either out or in it's not a 90 degree angle mm -hmm. so they're not building a perpendicular parallel 90 degree box here and that's part of it too it helps the way the slide seals works in conjunction with the with the slope on the slide mm -hmm. arms and you always notice that top is tilted it's so that water yeah. will run off it doesn't run back into the unit so. and what i've seen is on some of these slides they'll use a narrower window right here so you don't see mm -hmm. that angle right there so yeah. Typically on a rack and pinion or this through style slide mechanism, this is pretty common, I would imagine, with how this sits yeah, on here. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a cosmetics thing. It's definitely not a structural thing. I mean, and this wipes, you know, this wipe, if it was tucked back in a little farther or it was a little shorter, yeah, you, you would never see that. But it's all it's all a cosmetic thing. It's okay. definitely not a function thing, it's not an adjustment thing with the slide. Um, as long as when that slide is out, you've got your your D seal on the inside. Um, you've got compression with the inside and the same when it goes in. Um, I want to see when I adjust a slide, I want to, I want to be able to see that compression or when I stick my hand in there, I have no gap or anything yeah. like that. Especially important on the front of the slides. If you're going down the road and it's raining like a son of a gun, all that water, that driving rain mm -hmm. will come back into there. So it's, it's a visual thing. Every time you run your slides in, just Walk around and take a look at it. You're going to walk around and take a look at it before you take off on your trip anyhow to make sure you didn't forget to unplug something or flip the steps up, whatever the case may be. Just look at those slides. What do you think of this style of slide system? Um, it's pretty bulletproof and it's pretty user-friendly as far as being able to adjust it and things like that. And we really don't run into a lot of, you know, a lot of issues with it. it mm -hmm. it's, it's been around for a long time. It's been a staple for a long time. I mean, you can see units that are brand new like this one or, or walk around a place like this and see, um, you know, 10 or, 15 units, yeah. year, 10 or 15 year old units. And same thing, you'll see that on there. There's improvements that have been done to them over the years, just like anything else. Um, but as far as the, the overall function and the way they work, pretty bulletproof. Yep. So another question I have, and mm -hmm. it's not really a question, it's a conversation we had yesterday. And it's about the fact that whenever we look at slide mechanisms, whenever we look at the chassis mm -hmm. and components that, that Lippert builds, oftentimes if there's a failure, it's how the component was installed by the manufacturer. That can be, yes, that could be a true statement. It can be a conjunction thing too. Absolutely. There could be something wrong with, uh, I mean, human hands manufacture everything. So there is that that works into it. Um, I see it, I see it both ways. I mean, I work yeah. on, it's not just a coachman unit. I work on stuff for all the manufacturers because we supply to all those manufacturers. And man, a lot of the time it, it, it is, it's a, it's a simple thing that over, you know, that wasn't either installed right or adjusted right or measured mm -hmm. outright or something like that. 
and it starts out as a very minor thing and then you know six months a year 20,000 miles down the road that little thing turns into a big thing and then we've got a, a, a bigger issue so it's it's a lot of times it's the little things it's not usually a major thing but yeah you're absolutely right and a lot of that stuff works in conjunction with each other you know the we have something wrong or they have something wrong and it kind of compounds itself so because yeah, you're building into so many different manufacturers so many equipment. different functions yeah absolutely and the other thing that we talked about yesterday which was important is mm -hmm. whenever you look at an rv and you tow an rv especially if you tow it thousands of miles mm -hmm. something that happens to it you know at mile 1000 mm -hmm could affect what happens to your RV at mile 50,000. Absolutely. Right, so what I mean Absolutely. by that is, let's say you're towing this fifth wheel or I'm towing this fifth wheel all over the country and we get a big gust of side wind, it runs me off the road or a truck is coming into my lane, I have to swerve to avoid it, I run off the road slightly mm -hmm. and I go into a little bit of an embankment but I'm able to get back on the road and everything seems fine. But there could have been major structural damage mm -hmm. that could have occurred. Something could have shifted. The screws could have popped loose from the sidewall. The frame itself, the shackle hangers could have bent slightly. Things could have happened mm -hmm. that I just didn't see or I didn't experience at that moment. Yep. But then 25, 30, 40,000 miles later when I'm driving through Louisiana or I'm driving through New Mexico and I'm on a rough road, something fails just randomly. And I think that the RV is just crap, something broke on it because it wasn't built right, when in fact it was because of something that occurred thousands of miles earlier. Is this something you see a lot? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it, the way I tell folks when I go out and look at a trailer is, is I can only tell you what the unit's telling me. And I look at it, measure things out, and try to get the information, get that trailer to give me that information. Um, I, don't have, you know, I don't have a camera on it. I can't tell you 100%, but by golly, we're pretty darn close. And if we see something that's that's twisted or off or something like that the questions that come up from it and the and the information that you gather both from the trailer and from the customer really um can help us guys that are out there doing that work tremendously yeah. any information we can get but yes absolutely i see that stuff you know um something as simple as you know this is a tandem axle trailer and this is just an example that popped into my head but let's say we have three goodyear tires on there and one firestone um they're all 235, 85 R16s, let's say. Those tires are different in the way that they're manufactured. That running gear does not turn. It mm -hmm. rolls, and it's got to be in line. But if we have a different diameter tire on there, there's something that's different within them, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fight itself. It's not going to track down mm -hmm. the road. And the example, like I said, that's just an example I popped into my head, but I asked folks the same thing. You know, if you took, a, uh, if you took your pickup, would you put a Goodyear and then three other Firestones on it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. So that kind of stuff works into it also. Um, well, especially with different wear and tear. So yeah, if you have three tires, tires, yeah, if you have three tires that have 10,000 miles on them, mm -hmm. and then you put one brand new tire on, that tire is technically taller mm -hmm. than the other three tires. Yeah, they, have, they have worn more and... They're spinning at a different speed. They're, they're, everything's working at a diff, kind of a different rate. The other thing is too, you know, we'll see it where we've got one tire that's wearing extreme or something like that. That, that makes you, you know, you need to go into the dealership and, and have something checked out, have the axles mm -hmm. measured or have the chassis measured and stuff like that. So if you're in Texas, we're always around. I'll come see you. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yep. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. Anyways, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up and we'll talk to you again very soon.